Hi, I'm Michael Fennick. Hi, I'm Karim Qureshi. And we're here today interviewing Dr. Lori Dupree, who is a faculty member at the University of Florida College of Pharmacy, Jacksonville campus, about diabetes management in the inpatient setting. What is your role in diabetes management at the pharmacist? So my current practice is in the inpatient setting at UF Health Jacksonville, and I work with a lot of internal medicine patients, and many of those patients uh, deal with diabetes. And my current role is when the patient comes into the hospital and I'm looking at all of their medications is to see what medications they were on prior to admission and whether or not those medications, particularly when it comes to diabetes, should be continued on admission. Um, and so as I work with the physicians and I work with the teams, that's definitely a um, means of conversation when we're talking and discussing patient care because diabetic control and glucose management in the hospital is just as important as outside the hospital. There have been several studies that have shown that if glucose is not controlled in the inpatient setting, it increases the length of stay for these patients. And so we need to make sure they're either continued on their home medications or we have them on an appropriate regimen in the hospital setting. The other thing we have to consider in the hospital setting is there are different factors that can affect their glucose control. For instance, if they come in with, the inf with an infection, um, that can definitely affect how well their sugars are controlled in the hospital. And so what we do recommend a lot of times is we will transition the patient to insulin because we know we can get tighter control of their glucose management while they're on insulin therapy and then make sure we appropriately transition them to a regimen that they can go home with when that time comes. What aspect of diabetes care have you seen the most uh, progression in since you began your practice? And what areas would you like to see uh, further improvement? Well, since I have started my practice, um, we have really started to focus on this tight control that I alluded to earlier within the inpatient setting, just so we can better manage the patient and decrease length of stay. And so glucose control is important in that aspect. We have developed protocols um, in regards to being able to appropriately control blood sugars in the hospital and those protocols deal with giving basal insulins, also doing pre-meal insulins as well as correctional scale insulin. Probably one of the biggest changes would be in our terminology. We used to call it sliding scale insulin which was good and bad for the patient because we were treating the blood sugar after it happened. And so we've transitioned that terminology to be correctional scale insulin. And so at that point, we do still give the insulin after we see what the blood glucose is, but we also encourage basal insulin in addition to that. Um, so we can get that better control while the patient's on the inpatient setting and also to avoid any potential um, causes of hypoglycemia. What are the biggest challenges that you face when dealing with diabetic patients? I would say with uh, the diabetic patients is cost, uh, first and foremost. Just the access that many of our patients face with being able to obtain supplies, obtain glucometers, um, we're very fortunate to have resources within the hospital that can really um, help with that, such as the diabetes educator, and we can work with the diabetes educator. But insulin cost is also a problem, if, especially if someone is not insured. And so we have to get creative as to maybe the insulin we choose, um, choosing a premix form of insulin versus a basal and bolus form of insulin. Um, if cost is an issue, but if the patient is insured, I think you know we can find a regimen that can give the patient adequate control that they can afford if they do have insurance. Could you tell us possibly one of your more interesting or complex cases that you've had with a diabetic patient in your clinical practice? I can think of a patient that comes to mind several years ago that had several episodes of hypoglycemia. And at that point, I was rounding with the internal medicine team and in going to see the patient, I think this was probably his third admission, I was went into the room and after the team had discussed the patient situation, I think everyone was 
really scratching their heads, for lack of better words, as, you know, why is this guy still hypoglycemic? He says he's on the right dose of insulin. Um, we've asked several questions about how he's storing the insulin, um, how making sure that he's getting it refilled. And so from their standpoint, they felt like they really didn't have a reason for his hypoglycemia. So I decided to just really stand behind and talk to him further. And in doing that, I realized that his issue was actually drawing up the insulin. And the way I realized that was just getting an insulin syringe and asking him to pull up the 20 units he took in the morning. And that's when I realized this patient was um, had difficulty seeing. His issue with his vision or drawing up the insulin had affected his events that led him to be admitted to the hospital. So there is a lot of education by several um, you know, professionals that take place in the hospital, but that was definitely a rewarding experience. Say you have a patient who was newly diagnosed with diabetes or maybe isn't adherent to their medications and you're the pharmacist in charge of having a conversation with them. What is the big takeaway point that you want the patient to have from the conversation that you have with them? I think there's a lot there. Number one, they're very overwhelmed. And, um, you know, as a healthcare professional, you can understand why, because they're being faced with a new diagnosis. Um, there's a monitoring that goes in hand, their diet is changing, they're on different medications that now they're maybe injecting that they're not used to. And so a lot of people have a hard time with that. I think that at the end of the day, they feel like once their sugar's under control, they feel better. And so that's what I've seen long-term with these patients is they don't mind the injections because they know the results if their glucose is controlled. So one of the, probably the big counseling points that we really try to go over with them is understanding what medications they're on, whether it's oral medications that they're going home on, injectables, um, or even insulin. And so I know with insulin, there's a lot more counseling that goes into making sure they're injecting properly, rotating the sites, um, that they understand insulin storage, and um, most importantly, the signs and symptoms of hypo and hyperglycemia, and that they understand that as well. And then the other part with really any diabetic is the monitoring portion. And I think, you know, with any patient telling them why, why that's important, why it's important to write it down, keep a blood glucose log, and how that can be very helpful and important information for us as pharmacists, for their physicians, um, for anybody that they see who really wants to try to get their blood sugar under better control to prevent some of the complications, both short-term and long-term with diabetes. Thank you so much, Dr. Dupree, for taking the time to talk with us and provide your insight on diabetes management uh, because we know that it's going to be such a prevalent population that we'll be dealing with in our own practice in the future. Thank you from the University of Florida College of Pharmacy. Thank you from your community.